Now that we have our system with our cells moving around, it's time to start detecting the collision between the bullets and the viruses. So in order to determine when we've hit a virus, we're going to need to tag it. It is tagged with float data, but so is our red blood cell. So we need to put another component on virus that will identify it differently from the red blood cell as well as hold another value. So let's go in and create a new C sharp script and we'll call this virus data. Let's open that up. Now this is going to take the same form as bullet data, for example, because it's an I component. So just grab that copy it and let's go back into where to go over here virus data put it in here call it virus data and we're going to set a public bool for alive and this way we'll be able to switch this on and off or at least off um, when it's not alive so that we can then destroy it later. So just save that. Now switch back into Unity. You want to get hold of your virus prefab and then attach that script to it. So at the bottom we're going to get our virus starter, drag and drop it onto there if it will let me and then we will just tick it as being alive to start with and we'll turn that off in our collision script. Okay, so now we're ready to write our collision script. So we will create a new C sharp script and we're going to call this our bullet collision event system. Okay, so let's now open that up. All right, so this will be a job component system. And at the top here, I'm just going to paste in all the libraries that I'm going to be using. So unity.physics, unity.physics.systems, unity.collections, unity.entities, unity.mathematics, unity.jobs. And might not actually use all of those, but I'll put them in there to begin with. Okay, so we now have this class for a bullet collision event system, which obviously isn't liking the fact that we still have mono behavior stuff in here. So we'll just get rid of that and we'll start to build it up. Now, before this particular job system runs, we have to declare that it runs after the last frame of the physics system. Now to do that, we put in here update after and then type of end frame physics system just to ensure it's going to happen after all of the physics things have occurred, which means we can then figure out if anything has collided. Okay, now we need to grab hold of two different worlds that are in here for the physics. First of all, we have a build physics world. So we'll get the M build physics world system. And we also need the step physics world, which will be the M step physics world system. So the step world is basically the steps that the physics takes as it processes things because it doesn't sort of all happen um, at the same time. So if you ever have any physics systems that have like discrete physics events in them, they're not sort of calculated continuously, the discretes are going to be much faster to calculate because they only happen, happen like every so many intervals between them. So they're the physics steps. All right, so we've got that. Now we need to add in an on create to initialize those. So we're going to put in a protected override on create. Get rid of that base create in there. We don't need that. So we want our M build physics world system equals the world dot get or create system build physics world. And then we also need the same for the step. So step physics world equals world dot get or create system step physics world. Okay, so that's our on create and that's the initialization of our physics. Now we're going to create a, a struct for the actual job itself. Um, so the collision event. So struct collision event impulse 
job. And it's going to be of type I collision events job. Okay, now we're going to gather up all of the things that are collidable in our particular case. So we first of all we'll get a read-only lot of our bullet data. So public component data from entity for the bullet data. And we'll put those into something called the bullet group. And we're doing that as read only because we're only going to read the values from it. When you only need to read values from a group or um, I guess like a native array or something like that, you can set it as read only, which makes it more um, optimized, I guess, in memory, we could say, uh, because you're not having to write back to it whatsoever. So the compiler knows it can like, do special things with it. And our other one we want is our virus data. Now we are going to be writing that because we're changing that alive value. So in this case, it won't be a read only. So we now need um, component type from entity for our virus data. And we'll put that into our virus group. And that should actually be component data, shouldn't it? Now we're going to get our virus group. So public component data from entity for our virus data and put that into virus group. Okay, so now we're going to create our execute. So public void execute and this is the thing that actually runs the job so collision event is being passed through and then inside here we actually put our code as we would have previously inside of our four eaches so the stuff that we've done with for each is like in this move bullet system here, this kind of stuff for this, this used to be in previous versions of uh, the ECS, used to be structured very similar to what we're writing now. So you can actually see that the physics system itself is a bit behind in development to the other ECS things because it's still structured like this. So I would predict that in the future, this kind of structure is going to get rid of a lot of these sort of executes within structs like this down the track and put four eaches in there. But uh, don't, definitely don't take my word for that. That's just what I'm thinking is going to happen because I've seen that progress in the other systems. Now inside of this collision event execute, you end up with two entities because there's two things that come together to form a collision event. But we don't know which one is which. Okay. Previously in the traditional Unity, if you've got like an on collision enter method inside of a mono behavior, you know which thing collided with which other thing. In this case, we don't. We've just got entity A and entity B. So we're going to just grab those uh, and call them entity A. And that's going to equal collision event dot entities dot entity A. And then we have entity B. Entity B equals collision event dot entities dot entity B. Now, which is which? We don't know. Which we don't know which one's the target, and we don't know which one is the actual bullet. So we have to do a little bit of um, detective work in here. So first of all, we're going to go bull is target a equals virus group dot exists 
entity A. So if entity A is in the virus group, it is a virus, so therefore it is a target, and that will set that to true. And then we can do the same thing for B. So is target B equals the virus group dot exists entity B. Now it could actually happen that this has detected two viruses hitting each other, in which case we don't want to do anything with them. They're both targets um, and we would just ignore that. Then we need to find out which thing is the bullet, if there's a bullet. So um, is bullet A equals bullet group dot exists entity A and then bull is bullet B equals bullet group dot exists entity B. Right, so now that we've got that, we have to figure out, you know, if we've got the right set of them. As long as one is a target and one is a bullet, then we actually have a collision we want to work with. So we'll put if is bullet A and is target B, then that's a legitimate hit. And so we'll go var alive component equals virus group entity B, because entity B is the virus. So we're getting hold of its alive data that we put on it. And what we're going to say in here is that alive component dot alive equals false because this thing has now become dead because the bullet has hit it. Now, once we've set it, we actually have to put it back on to the virus, uh, the entity. So virus group four entity B equals a live component. And now we have to do the same thing again, but if it's back the other way. So I'm just going to copy this and put it down here. So if bullet is B and target is A, then we're going to put the alive component from A and then put it back onto A and make it dead. Okay, so that is your um, collision event impulse job structure all set up and ready to go. And this is the bit that will be in your sort of for each, essentially. It's going to run like a for each in parallel. Right, so after that in here, we're now going to put in our job handle stuff like we've had before for our on update. So protected override job handle on update and this will have in it the job handle input depths so input dependencies if there are any and it's going to return the job handle that we're about to create so the job handle job handle going to equal new collision event impulse job which is the structure we've just created and inside of here we will set the bullet group to equal get component data from entity bullet data And the virus group equals get component data from entity virus data. And then that will be dot scheduled. 
but this schedule is a little bit different to the ones we've done before in that it has the dependencies of the um, as you can see here in here it needs the uh, physics world that we've got it also needs the simulation which is your steps physics uh, world and then also the job handle if you have any dependencies so this will be our M steps physics world and then we need a ref for our M build physics world and then we need the input depths semicolon in there now um, this is getting our simulation which I just mentioned and this is actually getting our dot physics world so they're the components that you need out of those two things. So physics. Okay, so once you've done that, we then need to run a complete to make sure that it's done. So job handle dot complete. And then we can return the job handle. Okay, great. So let's just check that everything is happy and there's no red chaos we haven't needed the mathematics uh, library in this case and I think that's probably the first time I've gone through that sort of code without having uh, a red squiggly line in there okay so this is now going to set the alive to false for anything that is hit by a bullet so okay we've got that so now what we need to do is destroy the virus when the collision occurs. And we'll come back and do that in the final part of this tutorial in the next video. Thanks for watching. Please support the development of more superb online learning content by subscribing. And as always, visit holistic3d.com to learn more about awesome games development books and tutorials.